Hi! Welcome to my channel, My Great Wall of Manga! I'm Amanda, and I've been in love with manga for well over a decade. In fact, I even built a wall out of it! On this channel, I'll be pulling a series off the wall at random, and we'll go over a quick summary, introduce you to some of the main characters of the series, and I'll give you five reasons why you should read this manga. Okay, in this episode, we're going to be looking at the manga Kenka Bancho Otome, and it is written and uh, art is by Chie Shimada, and it is kind of a unique manga. It is based off of a video game. So if you're familiar with the video game, you might like the manga version. The story is a kind of interesting. It's a fighting comedy romance. So it's got a little bit of everything. It starts with the main character, Hinako, and she's lived a pretty rough life in an orphanage. And she had to win fist fights just to get by, to defend her friends from bullies, to defend herself from bullies. She really didn't have a whole lot of friends in elementary school or uh, middle school because she was known as the girl that picks fights, even though she was just defending herself. Well, she's excited to go to high school because she's planning on going to an all-girls high school where there won't be any fighting and she'll finally have friends and she'll finally get a chance to get in touch with her girly side. She heads out for her first day of high school at her all-girls high school and heading to the entrance ceremony. As she's walking along down the street, she accidentally bumps into somebody. That somebody is a male student and he falls down and starts wailing about how his arm is broken. He's totally faking it. Anyhow, she's a very nice, honest person, so she kind of buys it. And she's surprised to find that this boy has a face exactly like hers, like identical. And the boy says that she has to go to his high school entrance ceremony for him because she broke his arm and she owes it to him. And gee whiz golly, he just happens to have an extra uniform and a car waiting for her to whisk her to the high school. Yeah, what a coincidence. She shows up at his high school because she thinks, oh, she'll just, you know, pop in, uh, go to the entrance ceremony, and then run off and, like, go back to her school so she could maybe get some of her first day in. Well, when she gets to the school, it's like this creepy derelict building covered with graffiti and like gang signs and stuff. And she's looking around for the gym where the entrance ceremony is supposed to be taking place. And there's like all these tough customers. This is an all boy school and the boys going there <laughs> look like gang members. I mean, they are scary people. And she's like, oh wow, this is really not what I was expecting. <laughs> She goes into the gym, she finally finds it, and there's no teachers giving speeches, there's no place for an assembly to be happening. It's just a big open space where there's kind of like this battle royale between all of the freshmen that are entering high school. And she's ducking at punches and trying to figure out what's going on. And she finally gets somebody to tell her that, yeah, the entrance ceremony for this high school, it is a high school for delinquents, and the entrance ceremony is a battle royale fist fight between everyone to see who's going to be the king of the freshmen. She was not expecting that. <laughs> it's lucky for her that she actually is good at fist fighting. So she ends up knocking out the toughest guy in the room and just kind of sneaking out on the skin of her teeth when she finally finds the boy that has her same face he's dressed in her school uniform and oh yeah he ran off to her interest ceremony and he's having a great time at the all-girls high school 
And she's like, what the heck is going on? I thought your arm was broken. Well, yeah, he was totally lying. He has actually been looking for her. She is his identical twin sister that somehow got lost. And he's not that interested in fighting or doing anything gross, like dealing with smelly people that want to pick a fight. And so his opinion is they're just going to switch schools permanently. So she's stuck with the rather violent school and he's going to enjoy the nice, relaxed, posh life in her girl school. Oh, how nice of him. That was her meeting of her twin brother. He's kind of a sneaky guy. Yeah, his name is Hikaru. Boy, does he like pulling the wool over her. So that's the basic story. Uh, now we'll get into what the characters are like. Well, the main character, Hinako, grew up as an orphan. She did not realize that she had any family at all. And she was bullied incessantly growing up because she's quite small for her age and kind of wimpy looking. So she became fairly tough and a pretty darn good fighter. Um, her personality is kind of timid, kind, kind of shy, and really all she wants is to make friends. She has spent her entire elementary school life and her middle school life all alone, so all she wants is some friends just to hang out with and have, like, a normal life with. Next is her twin brother, Hikaru. Sneaky. Super sneaky. He is constantly trying to scam somebody for some reason. An uh, interesting little tidbit about him is he's a huge idol fan. And so his bedroom is all decorated with idol posters. And though he at first acts pretty darn callous towards the safety and welfare of his sister, later in the first volume, he does start, like, actually caring about her and worrying about her safety. Mainly with uh, exactly who she's going to end up with as a boyfriend. And less about her surviving a fistfight. But, you know, he does start caring about her. Next up is Totomaru Minoa. He's kind of a sporty, energetic punk. Always up for a fight. Always interested in putting the smack down on somebody. And he's the guy that Hinako punches on the first day of school. Well, when she shows up to the second day of school, she's thinking, oh great, now everybody's gonna avoid me and I'm not gonna have any friends again. And he walks right up to her and just thinks that she is the best person ever and he likes the idea that she can throw a punch. Now, granted, this is an all-boys school. She's in a boy's uniform. He thinks she's a boy because she's going under her twin brother's name. She was the stand-in for him in the entrance ceremony. So everybody thinks she's a boy. Totomaru is her first friend. Next up is Rintaro Kira. Now, he's not Hinako's second friend. He's just somebody that kind of shows up on the scene. When he first sees her, he immediately thinks that something is off and he kind of recognizes her. It ends up he is Hinako's childhood friend. He kind of <laughs> recognizes her, but he's confused because... The person he recognized was a girl, not a guy. So he's not really sure why somebody he recognizes as a girl would be at an all boys school dressed as a boy. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And this is a high school for delinquents. Nobody aspires to go to a school like this. So there's no reason for her to be there. So he's confused of you know, exactly who is this person. Next up is Takayuki Kanparu. He's kind of a grumpy emo guy, and but he's 
extremely protective of his family. He ha- He's the oldest child of a pretty big family. He has a lot of younger siblings. So how he gets involved with Hinako is that one of his younger siblings said that a boy from his school beat him up and kidnapped another younger sibling. And so... Unfortunately, Hinako happened to be in the area, and so he thinks Hinako is the one that kidnapped his little brother. And so Takeyuki, I mean, his first major interaction with Hinako is planning to beat the living crap out of her to get his little sibling back. He is more into wrestling rather than actual fist fighting. Their first meeting wasn't exactly great. But thankfully, the younger sibling showed up that was the eyewitness and explained to Takeyuki that he's got the wrong guy. Please don't beat up this other innocent bystander. And so they end up working together to rescue Takeyuki's younger sibling. Next up is Mirako Yuta. He is, weirdly enough, an idol that goes to the delinquent high school. Hinako's twin brother is a huge idol fan. Well, he's a huge fan of Yuta. There's a chapter where it becomes very interesting where Hikaru wants to get closer to Yuta, but he goes to the wrong school because of his scheme. And so things aren't working out and he's trying to figure out how to make it work where he doesn't actually go to the delinquent school, but he's allowed him to see the idol. It's a really funny chapter. And last up is a character that you don't really see a whole lot. And I think he's only in like a couple scenes, but it's Ho, and that's actually the twins' older brother. And he is the king of the delinquent high school. He's a senior. Basically, he's the top dog and no one can beat him. He is actually the person that, as the story progresses, Hinako is encouraged by her new friends to work her way up to beat. At the time when people are encouraging her, she doesn't realize that that's actually her biological older brother. And I don't think a whole lot of other people really realize that either. Here are five reasons why you should read the manga Kenka Bancho Otome. It's kind of a unusual mix for a manga. It is Definitely a shoujo manga. I mean, the protagonist is female and kind of cute looking with pink hair. And there's definitely romance and stuff in it. Weirdly enough, it's also kind of a shonen. There's a lot of good fight scenes and there's a lot of just shonen style hijinks. For the art style, it leans more towards shoujo. For the story, it kind of leans more towards shonen. It's good for whatever you're a fan of. If you like shoujo, you're going to like this. If you like shonen, you probably will also like this. Uh, reason two, lots of comedy. I would say the biggest story element of this manga is the comedy. It's There are some scenes that are super funny. And to balance out the comedy, there's also a lot of good fight scenes. Number three reason is the main character, who is cute and a very likable character, but not over-the-top girly, where the main character does have girly moments, but can still definitely hold her own. She isn't, like, always expecting somebody to save her or something like that. Number four is solid fight scenes with really good fight scene artwork and they definitely demonstrate that though the main character does throw some punches for a comedy effect she also throws punches because she's a skilled fighter and the artwork represents that and number five reason why you should read this manga well if you like the manga series wild ones then this is definitely in the same group. 
Also, if you were a fan of the manga series Orisama Teacher, this is very similar. Also, if you liked the series Skip Beat or Legend by Kara Wu Sujung, which is a manhwa rather than manga, you'll definitely like this. Okay, well that's about it for my little review. 